The Karate Kid 2010 Fans of Karate Chan creates a delightful fairy tale that is lovingly soaked in sentimentality and warmth. The plot is based on an old Frank Kappa film called Lady for a Day. Kappa's films were often referred to as Kappa Corn and Jackie borrows this style and runs with it. Jackie also brings in elements of Chaplin, Keaton, Busby Berkeley and Fred Astaire to give the film a wonderful visual flair and a magical sense of movement. This 89 film was a box office flop, which greatly disappointed Chan, who has stated that this is one of his favorite films, and it is for the most part not really popular with his diehard fans. That's because this movie is not really about action or stunts or even Jackie Chan, it's more a good-hearted salute to the magic that was Hollywood, HK style. Chan is very inventive in his use of the camera, utilizing some great tracking shots and angles, and he constructs a wonderfully designed art deco world full of bright colors and chic glamour. But in the two hours of running time, on the DVD, there are only three major five scenes that take up perhaps 20 minutes of the film. The remainder is focused on pushing the storyline along. One of the main criticisms of Jackie's films has always been that he only bothers with a bare-bones plot that is there strictly to fit the action around. That is clearly not the case with this film, as the action is woven seamlessly into the structure of the story. In this instance, the story seems closer to Jackie's heart than the fight scenes. This doesn't mean to imply that the action scenes are poorly done, far from it. The three action setups are in fact quite wonderful as Jackie creates some of the most complex and best time choreography of his career. At times, the action choreography is so delicate, perfectly paced and intricate that it reminded me of a 1930s spectacular dance number. But instead of a stair dancing gracefully across the floor or beating out a hypnotic rhythm with his tap shoes, Chan replaces it with some fight routines that come as close to dance as one can imagine. In all three of the major fights, the tea house, the outdoor market and the road factory, Jackie takes a page from Chaplin and Keaton and incorporates the setting and the environment flawlessly into the choreography. I have watched these scenes a few times now and I have never failed to be delighted by how clever and fun they are. Jackie seems to be totally enjoying himself. In a Runyon-esque world of the 1930s, Jackie comes to Hong Kong from Canton to make his way in the world. Bill Tong immediately swindles him out of his money and Jackie looks to be down on his luck until he buys a rose from a flower seller, Lady Rose, Gula. His luck begins to change, as a dying gang leader accidentally appoints Jackie to replace him. Under the guidance of Wu Ma, he tapes over the gang and tells them, much to their disbelief, that they will stop their crooked ways. Of course, he is challenged but after beating Michael Chow in an arm wrestling match and two others and about, he is acclaimed by all, except Lillard who harbors ambitions of his own. He turns the gambling casino into a sparkling nightclub with singing sensation Anita Muick performing nightly. In a lovely Busby Berkeley type number, Anita sings Rose, Rose I Love You, a scene that was deleted out of some video versions of this film. Another gang headed by Tiger, Karun HSING, with Shum Wyatt Ken Lo usually at his side, is also challenging him. And then there is Richard N, assisted by Mars and Louis Fong, in a nearly keystone call performance who was keeping a close eye on the gangs. And the other main threat of the film, Lady Rose, whose flowers have continued to bring Jackie good luck, learns that her daughter, Gloria Yip, has become engaged to the son of the wealthy businessman, Trian Fan, from Shanghai, and the family is coming to meet her. Over the years, Lady Rose has been scrimping and sending all of her money to her daughter so that she could receive a good education, and has been misleading Gloria into believing that she was quite well off. If the family learns that she is only a poor flower seller, the wedding would almost certainly be called off. As Lady Rose sinks into tears and despair, Anita convinces Jackie that he must help. Jackie leaves it all in the hands of Anita and she decides to create the illusion that Lady Rose is living in high fashion. What begins as a simple plan, beautiful hotel suite and a fabricated husband, built on again, soon spirals out of control and it becomes more complicated and outrageous as the film progresses. Soon reporters and businessmen are being kidnapped and the guys in malls are being trained to impersonate high society, all to keep the illusion going. It becomes pure screwball comedy. Another enjoyable aspect to this film is simply the large cast involved. It's almost like attending a family reunion, lots and lots of familiar faces. It looks like every supporting actor in HK showed up for at least a moment or two or even longer. It's a wonderful party. Some larger names such as Yuan Liao as a bagger and Jackie Cheung as a shop owner make brief cameos. Other supporting actors are Billy Lau, Ray Luing, Billy Chow, Ricky Huick, Lawrence Chen, Melin Wong, Amy Yip as one of the 